Hi everyone, Vanakkam and welcome back to our Little Sla YouTube channel. So today we are going to dive into the world of performance testing to answer a very burning question that is J meter or K6. So which one should I choose to make sure my applications are running smoothly even under massive pressure. So we are going to break down the similarities, the differences and I'm going to tell you exactly which one is better or which one is best for which situations. So, so there's no, I mean, it's going to be like no jargon. It's going to be very clear and all these are going to be actionable info based on my experience and based on informations that I have collected from the peer performance test performance engineers. So this is going to be very, very, very interesting. So please do watch the full video. And if you have any questions or if you have any doubts, please do let me know in the comment section. And if you like this video, uh, give a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our Little Sla YouTube channel. Thank you. And let's go to the video. So now uh, let's start a quick refresh, which is what is performance testing? So we all know what's a performance testing, but I'm just giving you a quick refresh on it. So imagine your website or your application gets a sudden surge of users like there is a spike of users. Maybe it could be a big sale, a trending post, or a new product launch. So performance testing is like a stress test for your system. So we simulate a ton of users to see if your application can handle it without slowing down. Your application is getting crashed. Your server might get broke or it gets broken at that point of time. So it's about finding the weaknesses before your real users do which is your end user your business finds it so now let's move to the next slide these similarities both jmeter and k6 can simulate thousands even millions of virtual users to test how your system performs under expected traffic yes both jmeter and k6 can simulate thousands even millions of users the next thing is the stress testing. They both let us to push the system beyond its limit to find the breaking point and see how it recovers from it, how resilient it is, how reliable it is. So both these tools give us the opportunity to push the system beyond its limit. And next, API testing. So if we are testing our backend APIs, both the tools, I would say, are excellent for sending the request and checking the responses. And next thing is the open source and free. Yes, it's a very big win, I would say, because both JMeter and K6 are open source and they are free to use, which is great for any budget. You don't need to worry about the cost factor. They both are free. They both are open source. And next thing is distributed testing. So for really massive, massive loads, both can be set up to run tests across multiple machines. Again, you're not going to pay anything for the licenses. Yes, because it's free and open source. And finally, they're reporting. So they both provide reports with key metrics like response times, throughput, which is how many requests per second. And you can also calculate the error rates as well. Host. So like when I say host, um, in fact, they save a lot of time. So all, all you're going to do is, all the tool is going to do is, they both perform the core job of performance testing. But let's think what are the real things which are more interesting to it. So let's move to the next slide. So let me take you to the differences, so the JMeter Classic and the Versatile. So when I say the JMeter Classic and the Versatile, so what happens is the JMeter has a GUI, the graphical user interface. So you drag and drop elements, you configure them visually, and you build your test plan like a flow chart. So you know what is going to come after which one. The samplers, the listeners, uh, the config elements, the post con processes, the pre-processes, everything. So the the pro or the benefit of it is, it is very great for visual learners, for a non-developer, and for those who prefer uh, a GUI-driven approach. And it is very easy to get started with the basic test. 
So the drawback of it is it can become clunky. It can be slow with very large or complex test plans. So less code like so version control can be very trickier because as I mentioned earlier, it's, it can become so clunky and very slow with larger complex test plans. So when it comes to scripting language, so yeah, we do have a lot of scripting languages that supports that are being supported by JMeter. So primarily, JMeter uses <coughs> Java, Groovy, or Big Shell. So Groovy comes uh, comes from version 3.0, which we have even um, discussed in some of our videos on how um, <coughs> well Groovy has been supported by JMeter. And then the advantage of it is it's very powerful. So if you're comfortable with Java or similar languages, it's very very easy for you to use it. So it it access it, it has access to vast ecosystem of Java libraries. So it can use any of its Java libraries. And then the protocol support. So it supports, I mean, JMinter supports a huge range of protocols out of the box. HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, the file transfer protocol, the JDBC, LDAP, SOAP, SMTP, WebSocket, any protocol which you name it is being supported by JMeter. So as I am, as I'm again telling you this, it's very extremely versatile for testing different types of applications, including older or even niche systems. So in fact, we have videos on all of these protocols. So I have videos on how to use JMeter using HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, JDBC, WebSocket, um, whatever you name it, all of these protocols. We have, we have those videos on Little Slaw YouTube channel. And then the resource usage, so being Java based, JMeter can be resource intensive, yes. They take or they occupy more CPU and more memory, especially for high loads. So what happens is, this in turn needs more powerful missions or careful optimizations for very large tests. And when we talk about the community, so JMeter has a massive mature community and a tons and tons of plugins. So if you have a problem, someone has probably solved it already. So there are like lots of tutorials and resources available in the market, available in the internet, and lots and lots of videos. More than like 300 videos are available for JMeter in our Little Slaw YouTube channel. And when it comes to CICD integration, JMeter easily integrates with CICD pipelines, but they often require more setup and some external tools in, to integrate it very well to, ex, to do whatever we expect the tool to do. So now let's resume back to K6. So K6 is a developer friendly and a modern tool. So when I talk about the user interface, um, it is CLI, command line interface or code first, I would say K6 is a code first. So you write your test in JavaScript using your favorite code editor, like it can be VS Code or it can be any other tool. It runs from the command line. So the advantage is, it's very super developer friendly. It integrates seamlessly into existing dev workflows and it's very excellent. It gives excellent support for version control and code reviews. It's not just like what we have with JMeter. So it's very complement towards the version control. So the, the drawback is there is no GUI, which means you have a steep learning curve if you are not comfortable with coding. So most of the people, I know uh, the, very, the very very first question is, if I'm in performance testing, do I need to learn coding? If you're using K6, yes, you have to learn learn coding. And then the scripting language, it's pure JavaScript. So if you're a web, web developer, you already know JavaScript. So it's very fast for you to write tests. It's very expressive. So the protocol support is, it primarily focuses on modern web protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, WebSockets, gRPC. The drawback is, uh, there are very less broad protocol support than JMeter, and it's not ideal for legacy systems or for very diverse protocol, diverse protocol needs. So, in case if you are using, if you need to use it for a legacy system, so you're not, it's not going to be very useful for you. And then when it comes to resource usage, so K6 is built with Go, Go language, which makes it very lightweight and it is very efficient in terms of system resources. So the pro, the advantage is it's very great for running tests in CI/CD pipelines or in limited infrastructure. 
and uh, when I talk about the community, it's very new, but it's very rapidly growing community. So there are like active developments coming in. There are modern features and there is a strong integration with developer tools. So when it comes to CI/CD integration, it's very designed for CI/CD. It's command line interface and code first nature makes it incredibly easy to automate and integrate into pipelines. So the, the advantage I would say in terms of it is it's very perfect for shift left performance testing where tests run early and often. So which one is the best? So, so far we discussed about uh, JMeter and K6. So it's not a simple answer. It's not going to be very simple. It, it depends on your specific needs and your team. So let's now see uh, which one is best for you. And before that, let me take a quick break, uh, a little bit of water because my throat is getting dry. Just a moment. Thank you. So you can choose JMeter if you are a guy who prefers GUI. So you like visual drag and drop building, like building Legos. If you are someone like that, if you like more of a visual drag and drop, then JMeter is for you. And if you need a broad protocol support, you're testing various systems like databases, FTP or older enterprise applications, and not just web, web APIs, then JMeter is for you. And if you have a large existing team familiar with JMeter, so if your team already uses it, you can stick with what it what works and you need extensive plugin support. So JMeter has a huge ecosystem of community contributed plugins for almost anything that you test. And now let's move to K6. So okay, you can choose K6 if you are a developer or your team is developer centric. So you write code daily and JavaScript is your uh, daily day to day. It's like part and parcel of it. In that case, K6 is the best tool for you. And if you prioritize CI-CD integration, say for example, you, you want performance to be a seamless part of your automated build and deployment process, then you can choose K6. And you're testing, if you're testing modern web applications like microservices or APIs, K6 is optimized for these. K6 is optimized for testing web applications, microservices, and APIs. And if you need highly efficient resource usage, usage especially important for cloud native environments or limited test infrastructure, then you can very well use K6. And if you need, if you want to treat performance tests like regular code, like for example, the version control, the code reviews and reusability are important, then in that case, you can choose K6 as your tool. So think of it this way. <clears throat> JMeter is like a Swiss army knife. It can do a lot of things and it's been around for a while, for a long time, I would say. So K6 is a finely tuned sports car and it's built for speed and efficiency, especially for modern web development. So both uh, JMeter and K6 are powerful tools and the best is the one that fits your team's skills, your project requirement and your overall development workflow. So I hope this straightforward comparison helped you understand their strengths, the weaknesses. And if you find this video helpful, give a thumbs up, subscribe to Little Slaw YouTube channel for more tech deep dives and let me know in the comment section are you a jmeter fan or a k6 enthusiast or maybe something else entirely so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much take care and bye bye